Hello, this is Lisa Lowe. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. Welcome to the bonus content for the article I reviewed for this issue of Science of Rowing on seat and back rest angle changes for a PR1 rower. I had the opportunity to sit down with Tara Morgan and Jenny Sitchell to discuss their experiences using these rigging changes with PR1 rowers they, that they coach. I hope you enjoy. Tara and Jenny, I would just love to hear um, your thoughts on um, the PR1 rowers options of changing seat back and seat angle um, and what you found within the PR1 rower one rowers that you work with. Um, and we can, you know, first I would say, you know, initial impressions of just like even how often you are able to think of playing with this for a rower and sort of where within their rowing or rehab timeline that even kind of like tends to fit. Um, sure. Yeah, Jenny, you want to go you first? Want to go ahead? I was just about to say, you want to go first, Sarah? Um, no, I can go first. I can uh, talk a little bit to uh, my uh, kind of experience with this. And last summer, actually, uh, working with Hallie uh, before the games. And basically, we started off with her seat as it was in 2019, which was fairly straight back, um, high back and straight, and high strap. Um, and the actual seat angle of the bottom part of the seat was just flat, like 90 degrees along with the boat, um, parallel to the boat. And what I was finding was, well, so let me back that up a little bit because initially my initial thought from previous um, kind of research I had done on uh, seat position, on where the rigging should be, everything like that, um, I was thinking that, oh, well, let's get her through the pin a little more, get her reaching forward a little more, um, and get some leverage around the catch. But probably, and that was very true, but she was missing all of this free speed on the back end for her. Um, and she was missing that entire sort of follow through motion. She was missing the leverage of her body weight. Um, and so probably about halfway through the summer, we started playing with the angle of her seat. Um, and so now she's in a fixed seat. Um, I'm fixed meaning the back is not separate from the base of the seat. So what mm -hmm. we actually did was we leveraged the front part of the base and tilted that up to tilt the back backwards. Cool. Um, and in all actuality, so she has no use of her legs whatsoever. She does have some spasms um, and can brace a little bit with them, but not on purpose per se um and so uh, the one thing we were afraid of with doing that was that the bottom part of the seat would actually interfere with her legs in the boat um but what we found was we couldn't tilt it enough to actually uh, m mess with for lack of a better way to say um her knee angle um, okay. and the way that her legs were. So that wasn't like a huge concern for us lifting up the front end of the seat. But even, I mean, even at the games, I was pushing her back even further um, tilting her back even further because we still had so much more to go, more room to go with her injury level, with her ability um, and just not enough time. And yeah. there was no one out there saying, oh, go do this. Yeah. Um, so it was just all trial and error with it. And she was dropping splits like exponentially when we started tilting her back mm -hmm. um, because she was able to not only get a longer stroke, but also leverage her body weight through the pin more um, and uh, get that extra little bit of oomph through the finish, which helped out the overall stroke. Yeah, cool. I mean, I feel like that's sort of what this case study showed too, right? That they sort of found similar. So, but interesting that you weren't even, I mean, this is where, and then Tara filled me with some of the like manufacturer limitations in terms of like mm -hmm. what's even out there as PR1 seats or fixed seats, yeah. but like crazy to think like you had to maintain that angle. So like you are, you're, you're eventually going to be limited by like, you just can't have her knees like bent to 90 degrees. Cause then where's the foot stretcher um, to like lock her into the boat that way. 
Um, right. Yeah, and, but, and we yeah. don't, we don't have the advantage like there is in six mm -hmm. feet or in wheelchair rugby, for instance, where you see that really severe dump, right? Right. Yeah. Unless we cut into the deck of the boat and they actually go under the gunnel. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> I mean, right, or right. you raise the rigor up so much that you're so far off the water. Yeah. And then you're just like top heavy and correct. Right. Well, yeah. one of the things that we did to address that was we used foam triangle foam triangles on top of the Wintec seat that would create that knee up dump kind of situation. And then we replaced our uh, sculling pins with sweep pins, which are much longer. And we stacked it up with spacers, right? To give us that effect uh, so that we could, we could, they had to stay level because if you also have the fixed seat, you, they're also sitting on a wheelchair pad potentially which is one to two to three inches deep sometimes and then you then you want to raise them up and then everything's just in the way of their knees um to get them because we want them in what's called athletic stance right at both ends of the stroke we want them in athletic stance up and forward at the catch and we want them strong in the finish and my top performance rowers are um i think i described them as like uh, there's one that's a t5 complete paraplegia um, and then I have one that has a 14 inch rod in her back and she's got a span. So for her, you know, she was able to turn her head and she was able to do all the steering and everything. Um, they both had matching strokes, but not both of them couldn't have the same seat back. So our situation is a little unique in that we only rode doubles. So we're also looking at stroke length and matching stroke length. And some people are gaining it on the front end and some people are gaining it on the back end. And then you have to figure out who's going to match well. Um, with ours, they moved to the narrow seat because they did have the lateral support and they could sit themselves up in the narrow seat, but they were strapped in. They had all sorts of straps. So they weren't even coming off the back of the seat with anything below their shoulder blades. Oh, wow. So we really didn't have a lot to play with. The other thing for us in the back end was we had to go with the narrow seat for them because they were very small statured people. Um, both of them are very slight and they were hitting the backs of the chairs, you know, right where the back of your arm, your, your, uh, uh, I guess your like triceps back there were slamming into the back of the seat. So we wanted to give them room, but we also wanted to make sure they could clear. And the yeah. last part of that was playing with inboard with the oars so that they could have a lot of clearance and could get out nice and far. And um, we ended up just going with a very slight back angle with them because we wanted them to match each other, but we wanted them to maximize where their power was coming from. But both of them are chest down complete paraplegics, right? right? Whereas some people might kind of be in between a, a PR2 and a PR1, depending on the level of, of injury, right. uh, their ability to hold their core or their ability to access their glutes or access the footboards at all, you know. Tara, yeah. I just have to say that while you were saying all of that, I'm thinking in my head, oh my gosh, I, so with Hallie last year uh, and it was very much um, basically customizing the seat mm -hmm. for her. So we like yeah. chopped off the back, chopped off the sides, mm -hmm. made it skinnier so that she could get that backswing. But we also had full boatmen available to help us with this um, yeah. and help us with the thinking, with the logistics of it, with how it would work. At first, we were going to try to just tilt the back back. And then we were like, why don't we just tilt the entire thing back? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that like helped out so much, but I know that that's not the norm. Um, yeah, we've been known to take a hacksaw to a swift seat. There's a video of us taking a hacksaw to the back off of a swift seat because they were just like, this is ridiculous. You know, we're, we're banging into the back in an unhealthy place. And with it being such a repetitive sport, yeah. I, I mentioned to Lisa that the repetition, we have to protect their shoulders. We have to protect their hands and their forearms because that's how they get around in the world every day, all day. That's their gold money right there. And so, and we also want them to feel like they're in a seat of power, right? Metaphorically and literally. Um, and then you factor in, you know, the, er the, the, the rigor height, the, where the feet are, where the gunnel, you know, all of that. We always wish we could lower them down so we actually chopped into 
through a racing shell. So we tore, took a racing shell and cut into it so that we could fit the narrow seats into it. And while it was way tippier than they were used to, and they had to really access a lot of different musculature to be able to hold that layback, you know, because the boat was, you know, moving quite a bit more. Um, that's where we got to have some more free speed uh, with the back end was with a lighter boat. Because the other factor to this is that most PR1 rowers who are not Paralympic level necessarily mm -hmm. are rowing 60, 70 pound boats yeah. that are bathtubs. And this is a problem with visa. This is a problem with boat classifications yeah. at the highest level. Um, we felt like we could go with a club trainer racing shell because no one's watching what we're doing. And I don't mean to say that as if we're, we're ignoring uh, the, the recommendations. Now the they all are. <laughs> right. Everybody's going this route. I mean, we know that yeah. um, some of the top uh, uh, rowers like Birgit Skarstein and those guys are very much advocates of athlete choice, as was Ellen Insner when she was working on that. That was a whole hashtag athlete's choice. Anyway, I know we're off topic with backseat angle, but yeah, um, no, it's all good. I don't have like like measurements to, to share like angles, but again, it's so specific to the rowers themselves. Right. And, but the thing I want to emphasize is that they could start at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle, and then progress as they do their strength training, cross training and rehab into a back position, right? A, lo a longer back position. So that's a factor yeah. as well. I yeah. think too, um, sorry, Lisa. No, go for <laughs> it. Cutting you off. Um, I think too at that, I mean, at least with what I've seen with PR1 athletes, um, I mean, the strapping plays into this too um, and how much forward movement they can get because I know at least last year we lowered the strap, but at that point you have to be able to still move forward from the back angle that you're trying to get at. Right. To um, and so get you out have of to hole. have some type yeah. of ab, some type of core to be able to propel you forward unless you're fully strapped in up above and only your arms and shoulders move, in which case it's a different conversation as to what part of the stroke you want to emphasize. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's the, those are factors that feel like they definitely come into whether or not you can actually change the angle into the finish mm -hmm. or not. Um, right. And if you have somebody who can come off their back seat and has that core strength to come off the back seat, and maybe they're strapped kind of loosely ish around the sternum, you know, um, then you have to be concerned with lateral yeah. support, right? Any loose strap is not just going to go stern to bow or bow to stern it's also going to be loose port to starboard yeah. so you really have to have confidence in your athlete that they're going to be able to hold themselves up and feel uh, powerful in that way and it's why we always use the same setup on the erg that we do in the boat right so we always try to mimic yeah because they have to practice that uh, 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 without the stress of right. water being yeah. around and the stress of size and you know yeah. i'm always a fan of letting people know that those pontoons that they have on those boats are required um however they don't prevent capsize uh, so you know you really can't play with that um as much as people might think like oh you know we could train them to not row with yeah, it's not pontoons like on. On the bike yeah, yeah. you yeah. can lift them up and down you can make them less or more uh, dragging on the water but again then you're adding all that extra weight so, you know, really having, working on uh, everything from hand strength and, and coordination in the hands all the way back to um, uh, elbows hitting the backs or, you know, coming into their finish. Um, yeah. It's really interesting you important. say, and I, I mean, I like even from like kind of the PT minded side of like you're having your athletes train and practice their strength through the same ranges on the erg or the water, but interesting to think like, sort of, you know, that what you could get away with on the erg versus on the water and sort of how a different seat setup could, you know, like, I feel like Tara, we talked about this a little bit um, and Jenny, maybe you've played with this, but I feel like you could, if you're just going for that erg speed, right? You, you have maybe a little bit more play of what you could get away with in terms of angles. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, kind of like you just said, hard to tell if that would translate onto the water yeah, there's yeah, a lot of other in terms of them being able to control the same range of motion with extra planes of movement. And then, you know, just, yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's so many yeah. more factors on the water. There's so many more 
Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it'd be so great if we could, you know, rig up a RP3 or something, you know, that has a little bit yeah. more like jiggle. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> or, or something yeah. like that. I mean, cool. there's not even a, a, what do they call that? The, the coffee stimulate simulator the coffee simulator the the yeah, spilling herb yeah basically yeah yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay we could never figure out how to get us a uh, strap fix seat on there no. <laughs> <laughs> you have, have to tear it apart you know to, yeah. like you know yeah we'll, we'll we'll do that to a boat but not yeah, to that yeah. so i yeah. wish that the fixed seats um you asked the question of how you wish they were better or yeah. designed better i would say first and foremost would be dump would be having dump uh, as an option that would be very figuring nice out, figuring mm -hmm. out a way there's a reason that those sit ski folks yeah. who have just competed in the in the paralympics there's a reason why they are so freaking fast and why right. rower who had the the mm -hmm. big rod in her back she was on the paralympic sport uh, nordic team that just right. went to beijing and i know her body and i know what she's comfortable with and that's a narrow little seat that she's sitting on with her legs tucked under. Um, and that was the other thing was what, what if we could figure out a way to tuck their legs back, you know, so they can get more forward motion. Right. You would really have to have a whole different kind of boat design. Like, yeah, you like would. A whole different and I think thing. part of that, I'm just going to interrupt really quickly because part of that too is the rules and regulations regarding the seat um, and what the seat has to look like yeah. and what the strapping has to look like. And I mean, they've been relaxed a lot since Rio, but you still have to have a firm strap. You can't have any pull in it. And you still have to have an open back. So uh, basically the back of your seat cannot curve around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Which is a huge factor. Okay. That's, I mean, especially it. even just comparing to wheelchair based sports, mm -hmm. like that's huge. Yeah. To be able to yeah. have like the back so of it, just hug the hips a little bit so you get a little lateral stability. Mm -hmm. like, like, And you can yeah, so up we've, until we've, the low back. Hmm. Yeah, we've actually taken those little cups that you see mm -hmm. on other wheelchair sports and we've tried to attach them to the Wintech narrow to see if we could get that uh, feeling in in there because they they the ones that i work with the folks i work they love to feel secure on the water right they yeah. don't want to feel loosey-goosey or anything they want to be able to dial it in um and we all know from rowing ourselves that the back end can feel sometimes like the most vulnerable spot it's one of the end, yeah. the corners of the stroke it can feel really vulnerable back there it can also feel really vulnerable at the catch right but if they're sending that boat that's less strokes for them it's yeah. more efficient and yeah. that that ultimately is the goal right to have yeah. efficient uh, long strokes you know yeah 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 clean no, finish it, yeah i i mean even just from what you guys have said too it's interesting to me that there's zero play within the seat in terms of what the seat could be adjusted to for angles right like to be able to play with even just having some amount of hinginess to the seat itself so you could play with the bottom angle and you could play with the back angle to create a dump or to create a layback. I think it's there are they're not seats, there are seats like that that can tilt back a little bit and can tilt forward, but the actual base of the seat so I it's have just not the back one that goes up. So it's just like the back like so then the you're just like back. letting someone go down a slide. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't really do <laughs> right. Like, well that's yeah. like yeah that's like the resolute seat that that's they created. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my rowers have sat in that seat, uh, when they mm -hmm. came to the Charles, uh, back yeah. in 2017 and they were, they're tiny people, but they were swimming in it. And they also felt like they were just like sliding right forward yep. and the back piece, you know, we, we, we imagined something like the resolute seat with a little bit of dump, you know, and then mm -hmm. having a back piece that came around the front. So we had imagined this whole seat and we were like, and we've seen a guy in Canada. Um, we used to go up and do camps in Canada and he actually had a spray mold made of his butt, right? And he made a custom foam seat basically yeah. that was attached to a fixed seat, but it was molded to his butt. Yeah. Yeah. And curved. Yeah. So cool. then he had way more uh, range, yeah. way more range of motion. 
Yeah. And we yeah. actually, for the resolute seat, did have a custom back on it that we had created. Um, right. And that's why it was fixed into place too, because we couldn't actually right. shift it that like the old too. model resolute seats. Um, yeah. And then we had like pads so that she wouldn't slip down in it. Yeah. Um, and she loved yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. had that whole workshop at, at, at with Andy and all of his work there at CRI back yeah. in the day. And I remember seeing that seat yeah. and him chopping up that seat, you know. It's a lot of work, right? It's a really, oh it's God. a lot of work to make just like an efficient setup, which just seems yeah. like a comfortable setup. Too. Yeah. And, no and it's way. so important. It's so, so important. Cause yeah. like we started out talking in the beginning and it's like, it's these athletes literally live by their hands and their arms and, and like needing to keep their shoulders healthy and all those things. So the, the idea that it's challenging to adapt the seat well enough for their body so that they're not like just overusing their shoulders continuously when they're rowing, you know, that they're able to like row and enjoy that and like live life and not have like kind of one dictate the other in terms of like what capacity for their shoulders they're using up when and and just like how yeah, fun it is to go I, fast easier. <laughs> but yeah, and and I understand why the Wintech seat is the only thing in town or the Swift seat's the only thing in town or the Resolute. There's only those three, right? That right. we know of. I'm not other even sure just, if Resolute is still making them. They don't. I looked it right. up. They're, yeah. yeah, they're not. Yeah. yeah. But no the, thing, the thing is though, is that the reality is you can't approach adaptive in a formulaic way, right? You have a starting point and what we need to yeah. teach the adaptive coach of the world really right. is here are the four ways to stay within a safe range or however many ways and adapt a seat you know like here's yeah. the basic the base of the seat right and then oh okay now you can add this strap here you can bolt this or here's how you jerry rig it but you have to be really 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 careful once you start taking them apart they start to yeah. lose their structural and yeah and you don't want someone's seat to just implode Right. you know, when they're on the water. So you need to have partners in manufacturing, fabrication, uh, engineering, and things like that. And it would be great um, if that existed. The problem is the population that we're talking about is so small. We're talking about like one rower in like a 200 mile radius that cares enough to want to have good, efficient stroke. Yeah. You know, it's such a small sport. So I think as the sport grows, which yeah. it is, right. um, and you see it in other countries. I mean, you look at Balmain in Australia, you look at Canada, you yep. look at uh, the British para rowing, they've got a lot of people rowing for them. And they've got these big programs. And I think they're either just saying, this is the formula, stick with it, we don't want to mess with it. Or there's some creative minds um, who are putting it together. So it'd be interesting to find out from other countries uh, yeah. what they're doing. You know, Bir Birgit was part of that study that yeah. you looked at yep. we we assume because think, it was yeah i mean it's it's done in norway <laughs> and she's fast and i and yeah. so you know yeah yeah well this was yeah, she's held fast yeah um this was very very interesting for me and not having had the opportunity to play with pr1 seats at all myself um and just really see videos and and people out on the water um so i appreciate you guys taking the time to kind of talk through what you've done, what you've seen, what could be better, um, and sort of what to sort of have coaches watch out for and, and reach out for, right. If they, if people are working with PR one rowers and I mean, you guys are well networked within that world, but, um, you know, I appreciate yeah, that. And, and I would encourage, I would encourage people to really seek um, colleagues and seek peer support and don't feel like you have to answer it all yourself. Um, Seize the Or Foundation launched the first adaptive rowing coaching cert. And we talk a lot about this in the certification, as well as in our webinars that go out all year with the cohort. Um, U.S. Rowing, I think, is coming out with a, wow. with a coaching cert. There's certainly been videos out there of people doing yeah. rigging. And I would really, really, really encourage people to look at the countries who are already doing great jobs at this. Like yeah. there are really great programs in Australia and, and the UK uh, where they are more than happy to share uh, what they're doing. And I can't say enough about 
uh, Simon's British Guide to Adaptive Rowing. It's one of my favorite Bibles. It's very technical. It's a very, it's really wonderful. And you can get a PDF copy of it on British Rowing cool. if you go searching for it. So it's awesome. I, yeah, I would also yeah. say, don't be afraid to reach out to people here in the US too. Totally. Um, yeah. Because there are more and more people now getting on board with this, more and more coaches that have knowledge on this. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's like, sometimes it can feel really lonely coaching peer one athletes. Yeah. Um, no, it's a nice, it's oh, a nice network yeah. to build. So it's really nice to be able to reach out, find us on Facebook, reach out to CRI community rowing, see your whatever. And, um, but definitely have that communication because we're not going to do this alone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thanks Lisa for having Yeah. No, thanks for the time. It worked out so nicely. I appreciate it. So many great thoughts. Sure.